as Atlantic Slave Trade. It was supposed to be a statue of reconciliation between the enslaved and those who were their captors. So I just wanted to point attention to the, to the statue as we walk past. We'll move forward. Standing now is right in the footprint of where the stadium will be. And that street there, behind me is 17th Street. Oh. <laughs> uh, 17th Street. Uh, I've got four additional slave trading sites that are in the footprint of the stadium. Uh, and there are about seven more, which are across Broad Street where they're also going to put up, I don't know, it looks like an apartment building. Y'all have seen this in the newspaper. Uh, and some other associated buildings to go with the ballpark. There's going to be, and I've just put in the ones that go back to Marshall Street. There's some more further back uh, that are going to be obliterated by whatever buildings they're putting up, parking decks, hotels, whatever. But the uh, four that are here, are on this side of 17th Street, and we know that there was uh, at least two where that gas station is. So I think that what happened was uh, from the earliest time, it began to consolidate inward towards 15th Street. But these were viable slave sites during the Civil War uh, that were here right in the footprint of where they're going to play ball. And another thing to uh, point out is a lot of the sites weren't necessarily selling slaves, uh, 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 but were involved in slave, slave hiring. Also, not everybody that wanted to sell their slaves sent them to the auction house. A lot of them were embarrassed and they would have them sold privately and there were a lot of different businesses around town, concentrated mostly in this area, that would do a private sale uh, so that you wouldn't be embarrassed in front of your neighbors. Uh, so there was a lot more ways to deal in slaves besides rave, uh, you know, running an active slave auction jailhouse. Uh, I've got 97, I think, slave sites, slave dealing sites in uh, the whole database, that's 97, of people who dealt in slaves one way or the other. There were also a lot of businesses down here that dealt in things like outfitting slaves and clothing, work shoes, things like that. So it's, it's a whole picture, it's a whole culture of how slavery was working and buying and selling and outfitting and renting out. A lot of people rented out their slaves to try to go ironworks or to the tobacco factories. And those rentals were carried out by agents down here. So you can see that there's a lot more down here than what is being, what you're being led to believe. You said 97? 97. And that's in Chaco Bottom? Yes. Right. I just wanted to outline that. And that's going from like 12th Street to 19th. The, the majority are in 15th. Can I talk about where Omohundro is going? Yeah, Omohundro was, uh, I think, uh, right across from the Exxon station. Um, Omaha was just a very famous slave trader. But some of these guys did a lot more slave trading than Omaha. And you know, even though he's better known, there was one called Hill and Dickinson, and they were always having options. Hector uh, Davis. Hector Davis, Hector Davis uh huh. And he went, he not only had his own business, he worked for several other auction houses. So these guys kind of move around too. But the really active ones were Hill and Dickinson. You don't see that much about Lumpkin. I think Lumpkin was actually renting out his jail and his auction services to other people. Because sometimes they'll say, we're going to have a slave auction at Lumpkin's or apply at Lumpkin's, you know, for this sale. So it's a lot, it's a lot more complicated and involved than you would think. You know, you get the picture from movies of they having a the slave auction, they bring the people up, you know, have an auction, and you don't get anything more of it. You know, who, who made the clothes for these people? Uh, who transported them? Uh, yeah, hardware. Uh, it had to be obtained from somewhere. And all of that, they had blacksmiths down here, livery stables, all of them who served, you know, maybe not exclusively the slave trade industry, but certainly were involved in it. That's why they located themselves there. Also, if, sometimes if you're riding around like we do, if you go up 18th Street, to a block across, I guess that's uh, Marshall. There's a whole bunch of buildings that are old livery stables, 
they're really neat. And you know that they predate this century just by looking at them. And a lot of that's worth looking at. Some of the buildings you can look up and see that they were here long before the Civil War. And I don't know that they had anything to do with slaves, but they certainly were here at the same time. And who knows, somebody else may research that and find out they did. What are the names of the ones that, are, that you've identified in this footprint before? Oh. <laughs> uh. I asked her what Okay, the uh, actually in the footprint, Betts and Omahondro, uh, R. Fondren, William Martin, uh, not William Martin, excuse me, Charles McMurray and John Toller. Toller was pretty big too. Uh, and Dabney Price, who's over on that side, he actually went around to several different uh, concerns uh, during his career. But he was located over there in 1852. Uh, the guys that were on the other side of the street are uh, William Martin, Edward Matthews, uh, Charles Mc no, Danny Price, Leonard Slater, he was a big one too, and A. Smith. And I believe you mentioned over hundreds earlier. It's my understanding that portions of over hundreds were right behind the gas station. Uh, Omahundro was yes. on this side of the street. Yeah. Okay. I would place it under approximately right field and the right field wall. Because these are the ones that are over on that side. I think the ones that are over across 17th Street are in the footprint of some of the improvements that are going to go along with the actual stadium building. So they're going to be tearing up a lot of good stuff. They really are. And, and also, if you, to me, I don't know if anybody else gets it, but when I go down to uh, where Lumpkin's Jail is, there's a definite feeling there. And I think a big stadium next to it is going to ruin the for lack of a better term, ambiance of the neighborhood. You know, I get the definite feeling down there. And I have for 20 years. What feeling do you get? Like I'm supposed to be doing this and something's important is here. <laughs> and and the sadness. And I didn't have any relatives that were victimized by slavery. So it's a human uh, feeling of something awful. You've gone places before where you said something awful was to happen here. And that, that's kind of that feeling. And also a feeling of I've got to do something. Anybody got any questions?